we've been talking to a lot of the senior leader CEOs uh, in our network around what are the key issues for 24. Um, big backlash for the VC community. What do you think are sort of the most interesting fields to invest in in 24? I'm super curious. You know, I think we're still seeing a lot of a hangover effect from the pandemic. Uh, basically every industry was simultaneously disrupted and that of course had lasting effects on both the venture capital community as well as the startup community. So I think there's never been a better time to be doing anything disruptive. I don't think there's ever been a better time to be an early stage investor. Are there any particular industry or industries or innovation spaces that you guys are looking at in particular because you think the impact this year will be so important? So we focus on B2B tech in uh, energy tech slash decarbonization, uh, logistics, aerospace, uh, life sciences and healthcare. And, and I think a lot of the businesses here that I've seen that at least excite me are taking products that would otherwise be waste for certain industries, uh, typically companies that have to pay to find ways to safely dispose of materials and then upcycling those into products that you and I would happily pay for. So it's kind of a, when you hear about it, it's almost a no-brainer, things that are genuinely exciting and just clever uh, business models. And so things like that, I think, uh, one can build a, a sustainable, scalable business. And digging a little deeper down the circularity piece, because there's so many great solutions out there already, but often I see that customer uptake is difficult. So as a prudent investor, is there a way that you can see how, you know, uh, is there advice for how to look at a circular business model of whether it could fly or not? Um, I think the, the metrics are still very similar to at least a lot of the older ways, uh, meaning that um, for at least for our fund to get involved with the company, typically you want to see a paid pilot. You know, somebody's willing to pay, whether it's you know, five, ten, fifty thousand dollars to to uh, you know to, to access this product or service or whatever it may be. Now I, I know a lot of the companies here are also pursuing uh, SaaS or software-driven models, and, and then you can also employ traditional metrics like you know the size of the the network, the uptake in terms of you know, people that are willing to go from a freemium model and start actually paying for a product or service. Some of the larger corporates um, that we're interacting with, um, are, I think, are seeing a little bit of a sustainability backlash, right? So uh, activist investors or sort of a feeling that maybe they've pushed it too far. Um, do you think that uh, the investment space is also going to be more careful or do you feel that, as said in the beginning, sort of there's actually more appetite to go into green innovation models? Uh, I, actually, I think um, partially because of that uh, backlash, you'll see a lot of investors that are focused in the space uh, continue to, to, to aggressively pursue new investment. Um, I, I don't think it's going to slow down at all. In fact, I think the, the opposite. Just uh, You'll see you know, more people looking for disruptive models that um, actually work as, as businesses. And uh, you know, I, I think that's actually a, a positive thing in the sense that um, you know, there's, there's sort of a, a double-edged sword that is hype. And hype can sometimes you know, attract capital, uh, but other times it will result in unmet expectations. And I think we're just seeing the, you know, the slight uh, enthusiasm gap as some of those expectations didn't quite meet reality. But the, what, what's actually happening underneath the surface is that uh, companies such as the ones that you see here and others that have been funded by uh, you know, traditional venture are starting to kind of figure out uh, the, at least you know, what model works best for them and they're starting to scale. Now you and I aren't hearing about a lot of those companies because they're busy you know, building a market, uh, but I would expect at some point when the IPO window opens up, you're going to see a lot of, sort of these sustainable businesses that were um, formerly under the radar start to attract the attention of the broader public. Thanks so much for being here and taking the time out of your busy schedule. I'm happy to do it. Yeah, thank you.